uh, big story today. Headline, the NCAA to Power 5 agreed to, de- to a deal that will let schools pay players. Now, what they're talking about is the NCAA will pay more than $2.7 billion in damages over 10 years to past and current athletes. This is according to an ESPN story. So uh, The sources say in the story that the parties have also agreed to a revenue a revenue sharing plan allowing each school to share up to roughly twenty million dollars per year with its athletes. So this is interesting. And when you're talking, there's this giant class action suit. There's several class action suits against uh, the NCAA um, involving money, obviously, because the athletes thought that they should have been paid and they weren't, and people filed suit and they have gone to court uh, or they're they're on their way to go to court. So what this is doing effectively is it's 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 a way of stopping the class action lawsuits. And they have different attorneys that are quoted in here. Um, and and one of them is Steve Berman, who's the co-lead counsel for the athletes alongside veteran antitrust attorney Jeffrey Kessler. And he said that it feels like a finish line, but that the cases won't be officially closed for several more months. Uh, Other antitrust attorneys told ESPN that the deal could unravel if athletes opt out to join a separate and pending antitrust case or uh, if the judge rejects the settlement terms anyway, then it could be uh, it could be put on hold. Uh, But he went on to say, I'm hugely proud. This is a revolutionary change. I never thought would happen when I started this. I'm thrilled for the student athletes because this will be life changing for all of them. Now I bring this up because I think it's interesting. It's this is the attorney for the for the athletes. This isn't the attorney for the NCAA. Like I expect to hear this from that guy, but not from the guy who's representing the athletes who are in this antitrust suit. So getting it down to kind of where where the money really is when you're looking at two point seven billion dollars to athletes over the last you know eight years, current and past athletes. What it comes down to is that the story says there's roughly. 10,000 athletes, more than 10,000 athletes that this will affect. If you go on average for those athletes, that's that's $270,000 per athlete. That's not chump change. It's not chump change at all. And apparently 10% would be paid each year until that uh, that sum is uh, is gone. Um, So $27,000 a year for 10 years. Um, Sounds like, okay, that's that's a pretty good starting point. And there's NIL concerns. What does this mean for NIL? Well, it means that there, maybe they can set up some more uh, stringent guidelines with NIL to try to make it more fair and to try to stop this from being out of control as well. But again, this has to be approved by all the parties involved in order for this to happen. But the Power 5 schools are all about this, and you can understand why. Um I think what this means long-term, if this thing actually happens, is that it's possible the effect this would have is maybe it would pull back a little bit on the constant portal action. It would pull back a little bit on the crazy spiraling out of control NIL part of of college athletics. They're going to have to come up with some kind of standards and guidelines and guardrails with all that and so far the NCAA has just kind of wiped their hands clean of it and said it's not going to do it. we're not dealing with it because each state is different in how they handle it but hopefully this starts the ball rolling in the right direction of of kind of pulling it all together and coming up with actual rules which gets us to this where do you stand with college athletics right now because prior to this announcement and I'm still not sure what to make out of this announcement I was in a bad place Kang you know me, I love I love college football. And I like college basketball better than the NBA. Um, I love college hockey. I, college athletics, I'm a big fan. But it's basically college football for me. I love it. And I have really been disheartened over the last several years to see what's happened with the world of NIL because it's not fair from one school to the next of what schools can go into their coffers and offer up. And then there were no real guidelines around it as to, you know, what is NIL because it had not been what the whole spirit of it was, which was name, image, and likeness. You know, initially it was about 
kids being able to get paid because their name was in a video game or because the school was selling a jersey with their name on the back of it. And, and the athletes got nothing out of that. Um, they got a scholarship and they got all that comes with the scholarship, which is actually quite substantial, but they wanted something on top of it. They wanted money, and I'm not going to argue that. That's fine. But what it's become was basically legalized boosters, you know, legalizing boosters paying money to the players and coming up with BS terms for whatever it is because nobody was policing it. And now it's starting to, to kind of firm up a little bit, not much, but maybe this does. But because of where it was prior to this announcement, I wasn't in a good place. I, 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 I'm a guy who follows recruiting pretty closely when it comes to, to my school, Michigan State. And over the last few years, and seeing how crazy it's been with, uh, you know, you, you get one recruit, you're all excited about it, and then eight months later, guess who's in the portal? The guy you were celebrating. And why? Well, because he didn't play as a freshman. Well, you weren't physically mature enough to play. Well, it doesn't matter. Didn't hang on to him. Now you got to hang on to him. You got to pay him to hang on to him. And it wasn't just Michigan State. It was every school across the country. Alabama was losing guys, you know. It was just a, a way to shift. Every player could leave after a few months. And I was getting bummed by it because I saw my school get raided. I you'd see other schools get raided. And then you, you get into the the portal situation where now you got to go into the portal and get players to come back to you or to come to you from other schools. And, you know, you've had various degrees of success in Michigan State, certainly benefited with, with Kenneth Walker years ago uh, as one of those players. But I don't like the portal the way that it's being used because it's just it's a year-by-year -year thing. You can enter the portal, you know, as many times as you well, want it's, it's free during agency. your career. It's, yes. it's college football free agency, and in the landscape clearly of college sports – has changed tremendously in the last 5, 10, you know, 12 years. I, I talked to Doug before the show all the time about, you know, things like this where recruiting has become, like, obsolete almost. Like, you, you mentioned, you know, your point of why would you recruit an 18-year-old, put all your resources into this highly recruited player only to not play him because you can't because he's not ready in, in any way, physically or mentally, and then watch him leave? You're wasting your time and money now because NIL and money and all mm -hmm. that stuff when you can just – you're better off going to get a 20-year-old who has more matured physically and mentally and can help your team right away because you as a football coach have to win to keep your job. You can't wait around all the time. That, that's the old way, right? It's in the pros, it's draft and develop. In college or in amateur sports, it's, it's recruit and develop. What's the point of recruiting anymore? Like you said, if they're just going to leave, go get the transfer portal guy who's ready now. Go get Kenneth Walker who can come onto your campus and lead you to, uh, you know, conference championship, a, a possible playoff berth, all that stuff. So I don't know what the, this ruling yesterday if it helps people like you who love college sports or it makes it worse. What it does to me is it gives me pause for for continuing to go in the abyss of despair with where. The college athletics has gone. My excitement for college football five years ago was 10 out of 10. Where it was yesterday, I feel like my legs have been chopped off over the last couple of years. I'm, I was like a five out of 10. You know, it's like I I was at a play. Uh, the darkest have been a few a few days ago. Just like there, what's what's the point? What's the point in getting hyped up about recruiting or, hey, we landed this guy. Yeah, but how long is he going to stay? You know, I hate it. I can't stand it. And then we'll get to the fall, and they'll, they'll play the first game, and I'll be all in for green and white. But again, for how long? Then I'm going to be reading stories about somebody's not happy because they're not getting any playing time, and there there's rumors that this guy's going to enter the portal, this guy's going to enter the portal, and it, and it's a whole you just get bummed out all over again. So that's where, I'm, and so I'm not at a five anymore. I'm, I'm I'm a little optimistic about maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel here, but I'm not back up to a ten by any means. I feel like I'm at like a six and a half. And then even if you get that recruit and he stays there and he does play well, you still have to worry about losing him. Right. You it's gotta, not like you, you're you, always re recruiting Yes. Like it's so he could just go to another and get another payday. It's almost like their second contract. Yeah. You and, know? Yeah. These the, the college athletes, the, the high end college athlete, let's let's put a stamp on that yes. too. This is the high end college athlete. They're gonna get paid more than than guys that just got drafted in the NFL. Like the the the, the the, the Florida quarterback. The certain guys, yeah, that, that don't necessarily have a pro career, but they can help a lot of college teams right now. I mean, that story of the Florida quarterback that is suing the, the coach in the university for $13.7 million because that's what he was promised? He was promised $13 million to play college football? 
So one what? of the one of the basketball transfer portal guys, the highest one who's going to make the most money for a transfer portal guy ever, it's not even like an NBA player. He's just really good in college, and that's how much he can help you in college. Um, it's crazy because one of the best things, there's a lot of things I love about college sports, but one of the, the best is they're considered amateur athletes. Now, if you pull the word amateur at them because they're getting paid straight up. Yeah, I mean, they're not amateur anymore. How much do you love your college sports now? I, I don't. You know, unless unless you can tell me that you can keep those kids at the university like the old days, but now we're paying them, but they get, they're going to stay there and it's not going to be portal crazy, or you can transfer once in your college career, um, or, or, you know, or you'll have to sit out. And unless we go back to that, while they're still paying them, I'm going to be at a, I'm not, I'm not all in on this. So I'm 248-539-9797 is the telephone number, same number to Texas as well. Where do you stand with college athletics? college sports right now. And, you know, let's be honest. We're just keep keep this to college football and basketball because right? that's what we really care about. I know there are other sports and there's the fringe and all that, but really it's about this, the big two. Where do you stand right now? Does this announcement that the NCAA has reached a payment agreement with the Power Five schools, um, does that change at all what you think? Because now moving forward, the, the, what they want to do is each school will have $20 million to pay athletes per year. Now, that's not just for football and basketball. That's for all the athletes. Um, and I imagine there's going to be a different kind of pecking order of which athletes get how much money, and that's going to be a whole other headache. But does it put it in a better place? We'll talk about it next year. 97-1, the ticket.